Welcome, this is our second video in the series on PCB layout driven design with VSS. In this video we'll take a look at component modeling which is step one of a multi-step process that will allow us to um, simulate at the VSS level or the system simulation level our uh, board level interconnects in addition to the components on the board. In this step, we'll uh, show how we do the component modeling. We'll include an approach to modeling not only balance switches and power amplifiers, but other devices as well. Our approach will focus on developing models in Microwave Office, and then we'll insert those models into VSS using the LinS model, or simulation-based linear model for linear components in Microwave Office, or the NLS, which is a nonlinear simulation-based component, which actually takes and constructs a behavioral model from Microwave Office into VSS. Here I'm showing an antenna structure. This antenna structure has been designed using Axiom, uh, the Microwave Office EM solver, that's very fast and highly accurate. I can lay out the antenna structure exactly as I would like to see it on the board and reuse this layout for the board as well as for the EM simulation. The results I get from the EM simulation will be S parameters and those can be inserted directly into our VSS simulation using the LinS block. Where we have S parameters from a manufacturer, here I'm showing a uh, Johansson Balin that I want to use on my board, um, and the uh, manufacturer has provided S parameters for us for how this component should work. We can include them directly in our uh, VSS simulation, again by using a LinS block. However, in this case, instead of them being a EM structure, as for our antenna, they're a data file in our Microwave Office uh, project in the AWR design environment project tree. We can develop our own behavioral models uh, by understanding how certain components work. Here I'm modeling a diversity switch in a very ideal way by using two SPDT elements or single pole double throw switch elements to provide the functionality for the diversity switch. Of course in this implementation I don't have any uh, datasheet type functionality like isolation or insertion loss. Um, you'll notice that I'm using many, many ports on here, and this is to map directly to the number of pins on this component. So while the performance or simulation of this, which would be included in VSS as a LinS block, is very ideal, in other words, the ports are I pretty much just short-circuited to each other, I'm able to re represent the number of pins on the package so that when I go to the layout, I can take into account all the extra layout that will be necessary in terms of pad stacks and any indirect connects for control voltages and that sort of thing. I can take that into account directly um, by making sure I have enough pins on my symbol and that will correspond to the pins on the package. I can go one step deeper and actually develop a behavioral model for a switch. Here I'm showing a TR switch that I've modeled based on a data sheet from Maycom. And by using the isolator symbol and uh, using the splitter elements, I can model the insertion loss uh, from one path to another. I'm sorry, from, from the input to the output. And I can also model the isolation of one path to another. Um, and this is all done by matching up the performance of my model here using this sort of um, behavioral uh, structure, behavioral hierarchical schematic to the data sheet uh, performance specifications. Um, and again, all the elements I've shown so far would map to a LinS or simulation based linear model into VSS. I can model them in Microwave Office, I can do S parameter measurements in Microwave Office, I can see that it's matching the data sheet, and then I can embed that directly into the VSS simulation um, and have it perform uh, in at the system level the very same way it performs. Uh, in Microwave Office, but again in a system simulation like EVM or bit error rate or ACPR. Uh, to model some of the uh, nonlinear elements, we want to do something a little bit more complex. And what I've done is I've chosen a uh, Anadigix power amplifier that's specifically uh, been designed for, for WiMAX applications. And what I did was I took the data sheet, which has information about um, its nonlinear characteristics like P1 dB uh, and uh, power output, 
and gain an EVM. Uh, and I put the spec sheet information that was available directly onto this NL amp model in Microwave Office. Now that's going to give me the nonlinearity in terms of voltage in and voltage out or power in and power out capability. But it's going to be um, sort of independent of frequency. Well, also on the Anadigix data sheet is some frequency information and I've been able to capture that with a low pass filter right here. So by tuning the characteristics of the low pass filter and looking at my behavioral model in a linear or S parameter measurement, I'm able to get the frequency shape and when I combine the frequency characteristics with the nonlinear amplifier characteristics, I get a frequency and power relationship that um, sort of superimposed or superposition uh, in those two different domains of power and frequency. And that gives me a very, very representative or very accurate behavioral type model of what the Anadigix power amplifier is capable of doing. Now to go one step further, if I have information about output impedance, I can capture some of that with um, one of the many elements in Microwave Office that are able to vary the impedance or the uh, match presented to a port, and I've chosen to do that with the HB tuner right here. Now the result of all this, if I go ahead, if I go ahead and look at EVM, is I get an EVM curve like this swept over input power to my power amplifier, and with just a very simple model, I was able to reproduce the EVM curve that is on the Anadigix data sheet. So now I have a power amplifier, a very nonlinear element that's ready to go into my uh, board design that I'm able to do in Microwave Office, but furthermore I can take all of these components or the board as a whole and insert it into my uh, WiMAX EVM measurement in um, inside of uh, VSS and I'm going to be able to simulate any one component to see how it affects some of these um, system level measurements or I can cascade them all together um, without any interconnection look at the ideal performance um, for EVM or ACPR or I can actually put the interconnects in which is eventually what we're going to work up to in this video series and I can look at uh, the effect of these components linear and nonlinear components as well as my interconnects well that's it for this installment of PCB layout um, and system level simulation if you have more information about if you'd like more information about this modeling technique uh, or you'd like more information about uh, microwave office the AWR design environment or VS uh, there's plenty of information on the website where you can contact your AWR sales professional.